artist. This week, we're going to learn about an artist named Krista Reineveld and make a landscape that is inspired by her work. You can choose to do black and white or color, and I'll go over that in the video. For this week, we're going to focus on the mountains and the lines that are inside of the mountains. Next week, we'll be making the background, which is made up of dots that gradually get bigger at the top. So our focus this week is the mountains. So you should end up with something like this. And then next week we'll go over what is in the sky. It's important that you keep this artwork somewhere safe that you can get to next week. So here's our project, Krista Reineveld Landscape. Who is Krista Reineveld? Krista Reineveld is a contemporary artist who lives in Canada. She is famous for using simple lines and dots to illustrate the beauty of mountainous landscapes that surround where she lives. Krista grew up in the Netherlands and loved art. After high school, she applied for art school but did not get in. She felt very discouraged and decided to take up modeling as a career, but eventually she got tired of it. In 2015, she moved to a small town in British Columbia around the Rocky Mountains. The beauty and the nature around her inspired her to pick up art supplies and start creating again. What started out as a hobby has now gained her worldwide recognition through sharing and selling her artwork on social media and online art galleries. Krista Reineveld shows perspective through the careful planning, sizing, and placement of lines and dots in her artwork. The lines and dots that are closer to us are larger and further apart. As the mountains and the sky get further away, the smaller the lines and dots are. Krista says, I am greatly inspired by the mountains I see around me. They have soft curves and sharp edges. The layers and the shapes intrigue me. On the one hand, a mountain can take me to the most beautiful place imaginable, while on the other hand, possibly causing danger. I like the metaphor of the mountain, how hard it is to get up it, and how rewarding the journey can be. Along with mountains, Krista often includes large images of animals that live in the wilderness around her in her work. Here are some drawing tips from Krista Reineveld. How to draw mountains like Krista. and how to turn a mistake into something that was meant to be. Bumpy lines are good. So here are our directions for day one. For your materials, you'll need paper, a pencil, an eraser, and markers. Pick analogous or monochromatic colors. What are analogous colors? Analogous colors are three to four colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. For example, yellow orange, yellow, and yellow green. Here are some examples of Krista Reineveld's work using analogous colors. And what is monochromatic? Mono means one, one color only, but using different tints and shades. For example, different shades of blue or black, gray, and white. So our directions for day one. You'll draw mountains horizontally across your paper. Use irregular lines. Bumpy is good. It adds realistic texture. Draw curvy vertical lines from the top point of each mountain to split it in half. Then draw thin vertical lines that are close together on the left side of each mountain. Draw thicker horizontal lines that are further apart on the right side of each mountain. Outline with markers. Remember, bumpy lines add texture and look more realistic than straight lines. So for your materials, you'll need a piece of paper, pencil, an eraser, and you'll need some kind of markers. The thinner your markers are, the better. So if you have thin or fine point markers or pens, um, those will work great for this project. You could use black and white, or you could pick colors. So that is up to you. 
So this example is all in black and white, which would be a monochromatic example. And this one is all in analogous colors. So colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. So we have green, blue, and purple and different shades of that shown here. So I'll show you how I would fill in this side with a green. So I've alternated the colors here. So there's a dark green, a light green, a blue, and this will be a lighter green also. So if you choose to do analogous colors, carefully plan out where your colors will go so that the left side is not the same as the right side. And you could use a set of four colors like I have here, like two different colors on the mountains and then alternate where they are. And remember, analogous means three or four colors. It's like a family of colors. So to get started, you're going to want to find the middle of your paper and decide if you want your landscape to be vertical or horizontal. Either way works. To find the middle, you can fold it in half, just make a light crease, and then that is where the middle is. You want your mountains to go a little bit above the middle because you don't want too much sky. You want it to be about half and half, mountains and sky. Then we're going to get started drawing our mountains. So when you draw your mountains, it's kind of like a triangle shape, but when we're looking at Krista Reineveld's style, or we notice that the mountain lines are irregular, so they are bumpy. And when you draw a bumpy line, it adds more texture. You wanna make sure that there's a clear point to your mountain so that it goes up and then it comes down. One thing that you don't want to do is to have straight lines. When you have straight lines, it's not going to show texture and it's not going to look as realistic. So for example, you wouldn't want to draw your mountains just like that. And then you're going to end up breaking it in half. You wouldn't want a line that is just straight. So not like this, but instead remember to keep your line bumpy and free flowing. You're kind of pushing it along the paper and you're drawing a, more of a realistic mountain line that way. Then when you're drawing the lines inside of the mountain, remember not to make them straight because that's not adding any texture to your mountains. But instead you wanna keep them bumpy and go with the curves that you've created. The bumpier the better because it will add more texture. So if you make a little mistake, that's actually a good thing because you can just keep going with it. The more texture and the more bumps you have, the more realistic your mountains are going to look. So now that our mountains are drawn, I'm going to draw a line from the point of each mountain down. And I'm going to make this a little bit curvy and a little bit bumpy. So it's not perfect and that's a good thing. You don't want it to go straight down. You want it to kind of come at a little bit of a curve and come down. At the top of the mountain, peak down. And what this is doing is it's creating two sides of your mountain. Remember the bumpier and the little more texture you have, the better and the more realistic it will be. So now that our lines are drawn down the middle. We're going to start on the left side of each mountain. So the left, remember, is your hand that makes an L shape is your left, so left side. Your right hand cannot make an L shape. It makes a backwards L, so this is the right side. So we're gonna start on the left. And we're going to draw lines that follow that middle line that you drew down the mountains make them close together. So again, I'm keeping them bumpy because the more bumpy they are, the more texture it has, and then the more realistic 
your mountains will look. When we go to this side, the right side, they're gonna be further apart. And if you make another bump here, like on accident, remember that's not a big deal. It just actually adds more to your mountains. And it's important to keep the width about the same as you're doing this. I am using a pencil, but if you feel comfortable after you do one side, you could go ahead and do it in marker. But I would suggest doing at least one in pencil till you feel like you got the hang of it. Because remember, marker is permanent and you can't erase that. When I get to the edge of the paper, I'm just going to draw a little bit of line showing as if the paper continued here and I had more room. When you're using your markers, try to find the different widths that you can get out of your marker. So your marker probably has a point somewhere in the tip and it might look like this, it might look different. So you're gonna wanna find some thin lines that you can make by using just the point or if you use the side, you can get a thicker line. Sometimes your marker may look more like this. This is called a chisel tip. So you can get a very thick line by using the side or on the end, on the tip of it, you can get a thinner line. And then if you have some kind of pin, like a fine point Sharpie, then you are gonna get a very thin line. You could even use like a ballpoint pen. We will get a thin line out of that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and outline this in a marker. And I'm using a really thin Sharpie, but you could use any kind of thin marker or pen that you have. And if I'm not exactly on top of the pencil line, that's not a big deal because I can erase it later. One thing you shouldn't forget to do that I actually did here is outline the mountain shapes and the vertical line that goes down and splits the mountain in half. So I'm going to do that next. And for this example, I am going to be using all black and white. So this is going to be a monochromatic example. That means one color. eraser and erase any pencil lines that are showing through. This will just make my artwork look a lot neater. So now I'm going to go through and fill in all of the left sides of the mountain with the thin lines that are close together. sides of the mountains are done, I'm going to do the right side. And for the right side, I'm going to use a little bit of a thicker marker. And I'm going to do the same thing, but my lines are going to be a little further apart. And they don't have to be going up and down. You can make some of them go side to side. I will show you in this example. But the important part is to show the difference between the left side and the right side. So you're making one side, the right side, have thicker, more spread apart lines, where the left side has thinner and closer together lines. 
but I am still keeping these lines bumpy and not straight. So in this mountain, I'm kind of making them go at a diagonal. What you don't want is both sides to look exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest. are filled in with lines. The next thing I'm going to do is just give my mountain shape a little bit of a thicker outline. If you have a thicker marker that's black or the color that you chose, I would go ahead and use that. Or you can just go back over the sides of your mountains again with your marker, that you, the same marker, and then just make that a little bit thicker. I would also do that to the line that is coming down the middle. So if you can find that middle line, and that's just gonna make those two sides stand out a little bit more and make the edges of the mountain stand out a little bit more from the rest of the lines. done filling in all the lines on my mountains for today this is all we're going to do next week we will go over how to add the sky and the sky will be dots so you're just going to stop here at the mountains for today have fun artist <laughs>